Yeah, uh, I've been saying that for a long time. Babies are not conscious in any sense of the human word. Um, at best, they're they're a bug. They're probably not even a bug. <clears throat> um, you know, and so if you're going to worry about their consciousness, then um, you know, natural childbirth should be outlawed, and uh, women should be obliged to have a cesarean section because um, you know the baby being forced through that birth canal is about as abusive as you can get. I mean, it's crushed, killed, and destroyed pretty much to get through there. Um, so that's um, so that's the first argument. Uh, the second argument would be, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, babies just aren't there. Their brains aren't connected. And if you're going to worry about what babies are feeling, you know, if you're going to go based on their reflexive reactions and say they're fully conscious entities that need your concern, uh, then you're going to have to apply that to insects. Okay, I've been trying to make a video response to your video, Gary, and I've run into some problems. So I've decided to edit it down just to one well, two questions. The first has to do with that quote, um, with the little excerpt of yours that I played at the beginning. I would just like some more clarity on what you're basing that premise on, that children, that babies, newborn babies, um, are like bugs. I mean, what are you basing that on? Do you, have you done some, do you, do you have studies that show this? Because I'm going to post in the sidebar a number of studies that seem to show the opposite, that in fact newborn babies are much more perceptive about things than we had thought in the past. And, I mean, you don't have to believe me, but if you could just take a fast look at some of the studies, some of them are very interesting. It, it's strange that no study finds what you are contending that I can find, so I'm certainly willing to look at any studies that you may have that show data that support your contention. Nobody seems to want to ask you this question, so I'm dumb enough to just ask you what you're basing that premise on, that, that children are like this, that newborns are like this, um, because I haven't ever found that. And the second thing would be about your take on altruism. There'll be another link in the sidebar article. It's by Franz de Waal. I've done some videos in the past on Franz de Waal's work on altruism. It's called Putting the Altruism Back into Altruism, the Evolution of Empathy. And, you know, you may disagree with de Waal. Um, Dawkins has a few problems with de Waal, but generally they both agree that altruism is a major factor in evolution. It is as important a factor as competition. For you, it all, all of evolution seems to be unrelenting competition. I, I don't want to argue with you. I just want to find out exactly where you stand on this because here's what DeWall says in a brief quote from the article that we posted in the sidebar about altruism. He says, A truly selfish individual would have no trouble walking away from another in need, whereas empathetic engagement hooks one into the other's situation. Since the mechanism delivers intrinsic reward exclusively via the other, it is generally other-oriented. And let me just say about this, what he's basically saying is that we as a species have the capacity to know what it's like to suffer someone else's pain and that it was very important in our evolution. Now these are called mirror neurons. B.H. Ramachandra has done a lot of work on mirror neurons and so has DeWall. There are a lot of evolutionary biologists now doing it. 
they have proven that in monkeys there are um, mirror neurons, but not in humans yet. In a sense, though, it could be mirror neurons that make us feel as if we are suffering the pain of someone else. It could be a, a simulation that our minds go through. But I think every feeling functioning human being has had that feeling. For example, what happened in the tsunamis, um, the response. I'm reading a book called Empathetic Civilization, and there was a lot of work being done in this right now. I guess my question to you is, if you don't believe that empathy is important, if you believe in that you, as you have said, that you're only using empathy for kinship, uh, then why would it be that we would support people we don't know in horrible situations in Haiti uh, as a result of the earthquake and in the tsunami? I mean, if we are only using empathy in that way, does it make sense that we would exclude anybody not in our kin group um, if we were doing it for nepotistic reasons only? So if you could answer that one, I'd really appreciate it. And could you base it, could you tell me what you're basing it on? Because sometimes I get lost when you're giving a description about exactly what you're basing uh, your statements on. So I would appreciate it. I'm just asking honest questions, and I hope you'll just answer them. Um, I hope. <laughs> anyway, that's it. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I have misgivings. But I'm going to try this and see. And if not, I'll just take this down. It's no big deal. But um, if you could just answer those two questions, why do you think babies uh, have no feelings um, when the research seems to show something else? And why do you think that empathy is always just a nepotistic kinship response? <music>